For most household items, it's machines that test their functionality and durability before they hit the stores. But when it comes to furniture, however, the only thing that can effectively express the comfort value of something like this is a human. And that's where furniture testers come in. For about $31,000 a year, you can sit, wiggle, and bounce on armchairs, recliners, and beds, giving your opinion on how comfy and secure they feel. No qualifications are required for this job, but there are, of course, weight and height restrictions. Also, you know, you probably want to have a reinforced bottom for all of that sitting. Hard work. Fancy being the next dog the bounty hunter? Uh, if so, you may find that although apprehending people who skip bail can sometimes get you killed, it's a very well-paid profession. Bounty hunters either work directly for bail bond companies or as independent contractors. The pay can vary massively as it's usually 10% of a captured suspect's bail bond. On average, it starts from 70,000 bucks a year, but it can go a lot higher if you're bringing in those big, big bad men. No specific training is required, but obviously most states require that those new to the profession sit an exam in order to get their license, although I'm not sure how well an exam can determine whether or not you're going to be able to survive. A wrinkle chaser is basically someone who irons wrinkles from shoes using a hand iron or a hot air blow dryer. It's recommended that anyone who wishes to pursue this career should at least have a high school degree Along with a good eye for detail, a love of shoes would probably be an advantage as well. Those in the shoe smoothing profession can expect to earn a respectable 19,000 to 49,000 bucks a year just for smoothing shoes. That's crazy. Face feelers are hired to use their hands to feel the faces of people testing personal care products such as moisturizers and razor blades. I've been going around feeling people's faces for years and I've never been paid for it. In fact, it's got me into a lot of trouble. Anyway, the job pays an impressive 25 bucks an hour, and although it may sound easy, it does require a sensitive touch, an excellent ability to describe something, and three months of training and practice. Having your own hands and fingers is also pretty vital for the job as well. Yes, there really is such a profession as a paper towel sniffer. When they're produced, paper towels are not always odorless, and no company wants to have a reputation for selling stinky towels. To combat this problem, some firms hire people to spend their day sniffing out sinks that their products may be emitting. The job pays up to 52,000 bucks a year, and all an applicant needs is a strong sense of smell. Some very high-paying jobs come with a great deal of danger, but few are as risky and as well-paid as airplane repos. When someone doesn't keep up repayments on the aircraft, be it a foreign airline company or a shady businessman, or maybe an international drug dealer, the airplane repos are called in. If they can survive the occasional shootout and manage to get the planes back to the banks, an airline repo gets to keep 6-10% of its resale value. With some aircraft selling for millions of dollars, this job can be very lucrative. Anyone wishing to enter the profession obviously needs to be a pilot because you're going to have to fly it back afterwards, and probably shouldn't be too phased by people attempting to kill them. Um, I can't do either of those things, but it does sound like a fun job, so I might apply. The main requirement for a crime scene cleaner is a very strong stomach. Again, another job I can't do. Washing away the various bodily fluids that have been left behind after a violent crime definitely isn't one for the squeamish like me. But that unpleasantness is one of the reasons this profession pays $50,000 a year. You'll also have to endure hot and heavy hazmat suits and You'll be at risk of infections, but the good news is that education requirements are minimal and the job only requires you pass a health and safety exam. Like several jobs on this list, pearl diving pays well but can be very dangerous. Pearl divers don't use any diving equipment like scuba divers, and the most they ever really have is a nose plug, so being able to hold your breath for extended amounts of time is a necessity. You also need to know the undersea terrain of the area you dive in extremely well. As long as you're willing to risk drowning, you know, the bends, or just dangerous sea creatures, a pearl diver can earn anything up to 50,000 bucks a year. Again though, probably not. More than 120,000 golf balls end up at the bottom of courses water hazards every year. Golf ball refurbishers pay divers to collect these balls so they can fix them up and resell them at a discounted price. Hauling a hundred golf balls from the bottom of a lake is physically demanding work, and you obviously need to be pretty adept with scuba gear 
but the job usually requires no education or qualifications and can pay up to $90,000 a year. Let's just think about that one for a second. You can potentially earn a lot more money being somebody who dives in ponds for golf balls than someone who dives in the sea for pearls. We live in a weird world. The market for deer hunting scents in the USA is massive, and most of these products are made from deer urine. This means if you happen to own a few of these creatures, or if you are a deer and you've got a bucket sitting around, you could be sitting on an untapped gold mine. Providing you're not bothered about handling deer pee, and you can understand the, you know, the requirements to deal with very strong odours, then each animal has the potential to earn anything from 93,000 to 303,000. No, sorry, 93. Hundred thousand, the three hundred, hundred thousand dollars a year. I misread that because it seemed crazy, and it really is. Just by answering the call of nature, the urine is jarred and refrigerated before being sold to hunting stores. So as long as you don't mistake the stuff for apple juice before it sells and go for a cheeky glug, this could be an incredibly well-paid career. I, can't, I cannot believe those figures. I misread them because I wanted to. No one should make over three hundred thousand dollars a year just from one deer weeing in a bucket. What's wrong with the world?